my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy, and welcome back to another episode of Hard Times where I explore food and recipe from times of hardship. Today I'm going to be making Geta. So Geta has been on my mind for years now, I think pretty much from the beginning of my Hard Times series. I've heard and read about Geta thanks to all of my beautiful lovelies who recommended it to me and I never made it and I thought, why not? This is a perfect opportunity to make this dish which grew out of times of necessity. This recipe is basically a way to extend meat and feed more people with less meat. The secret ingredient is oatmeal, more specifically steel cut oatmeal or pin the head oatmeal. Now this oatmeal is a little bit different than rolled oats because it's the oats in whole form and takes more time to cook. Geta is a great example of hyperregionalism. It is eaten specifically in the Cincinnati area and its history dates back to when German immigrants came and made a sausage that was extended with oats called Grützwurst, which was sausage that was extended with oatmeal. And to this day, it's very, very popular in the Cincinnati area and is served oftentimes for breakfast. And because it requires a lot of cooking and refrigeration, I prepared most of this yesterday. So let me walk you through the steps of how to make homemade geta. <laughs> I should also mention cousins to Geta would be Pennsylvania Scrapple or North Carolina Liver Mush. So I'm so inspired by the hard times ethos of being resourceful, extending things, finding ways to get by. So on that note, let's go ahead and make some Geta. So the recipe I'm using today comes from the daringgourmet.com and I will put a link down below to that recipe. So the first thing we're gonna do is cook our oatmeal. So we're gonna take two and a half cups of steel cut oats, place them in a large pot and add four cups of beef broth. Nice. Wait, I think this is gonna be like a stew. That's right. I'm gonna add three bay leaves and one and a half teaspoons of dried marjoram. And then um, flattened off. Yeah, Ooh, Yeah, you can just put that big heaping spoon in there. Oops. Chef Taddy. Oops. And four cups of water. The recipe calls for three teaspoons of salt, but I only added one because I wanted to adjust for saltiness because I knew my beef broth was very salty. So bring this all up to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna reduce the heat and let it simmer for about 90 minutes or until your oatmeal is nice and tender. Make sure to check this every 10 minutes or so and give it a stir because it likes to stick to the bottom of the pot. So after about 90 minutes or when your oatmeal is nice and tender, we're gonna add one pound of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. We're gonna add one large onion that's been finely chopped and five cloves of garlic that have been minced. And now we're gonna add a bunch of aromatics. One teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon of mace, half teaspoon of black pepper, a half teaspoon of white pepper, half teaspoon of coriander, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Bring this all up to a boil, then reduce the heat and have it on a low simmer and cook it for an additional hour. So after an hour, you're gonna take two loaf pans and grease them with butter, and then pour your oatmeal meat mixture into the loaf pans. Cool them off and then place them in the refrigerator to refrigerate overnight. So this is all cooked and can be eaten this way, but traditionally it is eaten nice and crispy. So now we're going to fry this up. So while we're getting this out of the loaf pan, I've got a saute pan heating up here. Gore this on the outside and let's get it out. Here we go. Let's get it out. I always have the hardest time on molding things. This was greased very liberally with butter. Oh, here we go. All right, it came out. Here we are, get up! <laughs> We're gonna cut it in half an inch slices. Now the Daring Gourmet says the trick to getting this nice and crispy is to use a dry pan. Don't add any oil whatsoever. Sounds promising. Let's do two slices. Now in the Cincinnati area, you can buy Geta pre-made just at the supermarket. Gliers or Gleers, Cincinnatians tell me the proper pronunciation is probably the most popular, or you can find it at pretty much any diner or greasy spoon in the area. 
cooking it up, cooking it up. So I find when it comes to cooking things crispy, the best thing to do is not to mess with it too much. Don't try to move it. Don't You want that crispy fond, crispy bit on the bottom. So don't flip it, flip it back and forth. Just take a little peek and when it's golden, you and then you're good. So this would be served just like you would serve bacon or sausage. It would be accompanied with hash browns, and toast, eggs. Sounds stinking delicious. That's one of my favorite breakfasts ever, like a full breakfast, fried eggs, hash browns, coffee, juice. <sighs> beautiful. That is beautiful. Uh. Oh. Tried. I tried. Alrighty, my beautiful lovelies, look at this. Doesn't this look amazing? <sighs> Crispy fried, beautiful sunny side up egg. Let's give this a taste. Put a little bit of pepper on my egg because that's how I like it. Alrighty, here goes my first taste of Geta. All right, let's cut this. Ooh, look how soft it is. Look at that, you can see the oats. Alrighty, here we go, itadakimasu. Mmm. Oh, that's good. It's absolutely delicious. It has the flavor profile of breakfast sausage, combination of marjoram, coriander, clove, ginger, mace. That combination creates breakfast sausage. Who knew? I never knew because I've never made sausage. Absolutely delicious. The texture is very different though. The oatmeal has a lovely bite to it. It's fully cooked, but there's a nice little kind of texture to it. Mmm. Mmm. The texture kind of reminds me of corned beef hash. You've got that nice kind of crispness on the outside, that nice caramelization, but the inside is very soft and tender, but there is a little bit of bite to it, thanks to the steel cut oats in there. So if you end up making this recipe, I definitely recommend erring on the side of using less salt. I only added one teaspoon of salt, although the recipe called for three. Depending on what type of beef broth you use, you're gonna have different amounts of sodium. Okay, let's have some with this beautiful egg. Oh, oh yeah. This is an egg from our own chickens. Look at that yolk. Delicious. Not only does this taste good, but I like the textures going on in here, and it also doesn't feel like a big sodium bomb like sausage does. I love sausage, don't get me wrong. Breakfast slings are my favorite, but this is so nice. I love it. The oatmeal also gives it kind of a creamy texture to it, which is really, really nice. Texturally, just lovely. So there you have it, homemade geta. I definitely recommend it. It does take some time to cook and prepare, I did see some other recipes that you could pair this using a slow cooker or pressure cooker, so that will definitely reduce the amount of time, but delicious. I totally recommend making it. You make a whole bunch. I'm gonna slice this up and store it in the freezer and just take it down so we can have it for Sunday breakfast. So scrum delicious. Alrighty, thank you so much to all my beautiful lovelies that recommended that I make Geta. I've done it, I love it. Can't wait to visit Cincinnati someday and have it at a real diner. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever had Geta before or if you've ever had liver mush or scrapple or some other kind of meat extended dish. Wanna hear about it? Love those kinds of recipes. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>